Right, today, I want to take a very simple look at Cap M or the capital asset pricing model. All we're really trying to do here is model expected return for assets. That's it. Okay. So let's start off here with a simple expected return, right? So at time T0, the asset is worth, you know, $100. And by time T1, the asset is worth $1,000. That would be kind of an expected return. But the thing is, that's not how things work in general. Things don't usually follow a straight line trajectory. So we're going to have kind of a different path for, for that asset. It could be something like this. It's relatively stable, but it is somewhat volatile at the same time. Um, we could also have something that's like a little more volatile, but still gets to the same place. And we could have something even more volatile that might look like this, but ends up at the same place. Now, the thing is, as far as we are concerned, that return is good and that movement is bad. So of, of those assets, even though they end up in the same place, we would prefer that first asset with the lowest volatility. So that volatility is, that's all we're saying when we talk about risk uh, in the market. Now, uh, we also could look at, you know, say three different expected return paths here. So we have one that's kind of a low return path. We would expect, you know, that uh, the volatility associated with that return path is relatively low. We'll say if you have a medium return asset, we might expect that volatility to be a little bit higher. And finally, if you have a high return asset, we might expect uh, that return to be a little bit more. And this is just a simple way of saying that given a certain amount of risk, we want our our compensation, our expected return to reflect that risk, right? So in general, what we want is the higher that fluctuation, the higher we expect our future returns to be. So we we will buy at a lower price if we're expecting lots of volatility, and we will buy at a higher price if we're expecting a small amount of volatility. That's all we're talking about here. Still very simple concepts. Now, when it comes to cap M, it's more than just that, right? It's not that volatility that we see that we talk about here in terms of risk. We're looking at a measure here. I've, it's down here. We're talking about the covariance uh, of that asset with the market. And the key point here is that there are some parts of that volatility that we see that can be diversified away. So that parts that can be diversified away by buying more assets, that idiosyncratic component will cancel each other out. So think of a sine wave and a cosine wave. Those waves cancel each other out. And what we're saying here is in cap M, we are not going to compensate you for the idiosyncratic risk that you could, if you so choose, uh, diversify away by holding more assets. That's all we're saying here with CapM. Super simple. Risk matters, but only a particular kind of risk matters because you can diversify away risk whether you do it or not. We're not going to pay you for it. Okay. That's as simple as it gets. Now, the other thing we need to think about is the risk-free rate. Typically, what we're looking at here is, you know, a government bond for that time period. Okay, simple again. Now, you could argue that there's some some countries where that's truly not a risk-free asset uh, because of inflation or mismanagement or whatever it might be. I would argue you are correct. But for the sake of argument, let's just think long-term U.S. bond, uh, safe investment. There's no danger of default there. Also, we're going to say, look, we don't really care what the market returns. If the market returns 10, that's okay, but we care about it in terms of versus that risk-free rate. So 10 versus two, we care about that 8% difference, right? That's what matters. It's that return above and beyond that risk-free rate. That's a key component here. If we put it all together and we're saying, hey, look, our asset, what we expected to return over the, over the time period is a function of, well, it's that risk-free rate plus that beta, that co-movement with the market that excludes the idiosyncratic risk times that differentiation between the market return and the risk-free rate of return. That's it. That is all the capital asset pricing model is. Now, there are some assumptions in there that are built in and there's some other things that we can cover, but I like to keep these videos short. So I will follow up with another video further going into CAPM. But for today, easy peasy. That is about as simple as it gets. A very easy concept. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed that. I'm Brian Kozlowski.